Our March sub-battle continues with the Commanders report as the top two teams in the NFL Draft Bears, number one pick, Commanders number two pick. we got to beat them in subscribers as well. Commanders have been active in free agency, so they're making moves. If you want free daily Bears content, hit that subscribe button. Plus, you got to enjoy a little competition. Let's take down the Commanders report. You're watching Chicago Bears now. My name is Harrison Graham. On today's show, we're going to dive into the latest Chicago Bears rumors as NFL free agency continues. Day four, we will be live later today as well. So turn on your notifications for that. We're also presented by Roan. Rocking the nice commuter polo today from Roan. Go check them out. Upgrade your wardrobe because that is what Roan has done. They absolutely reinvigorated the male's closet and the reason they were able to do that is because they launched the commuter collection the most comfortable breathable and flexible set of products known to man and here's why because they have the most comfortable pants dress shirts golf polos other clothing items as well not only do you look good you feel good plenty of clothing companies have had clothes that feel good but you're stiff you're not comfortable you're in a business meeting that's lasting a while and you're like get me out of this collared shirt not with Throne, very stretchy material with their four-way stretch fabric. A couple other benefits of Roan. Machine washable. You will save so much money in the long run by not having to go to the dry cleaners with Roan. You can throw these in the mic in the I almost said the microwave. The washing machine and not have to dry them in your dryer. You air dry them, boom, you're good to go. You can obviously use an iron as well. Roan.com slash chat sports gets you 20% off. It's R H O N E dot com slash chat sports for 20% off. Check out Roan today. You are not going to regret it. Okay, let's get into today's rumors. How about signing DJ Wanham? This has been kind of lurking for a couple of days now because he is set to visit with the Bears tonight. It sounds like he's visiting with the Panthers first. It, we thought that Panthers meeting was going to be yesterday, but David Newton, who covers the Panthers, says that meeting is going to be today. The Panthers are also meeting with Jadeveon Clowney and Chase Young, hoping to sign one or two of those guys as they attempt to replace Brian Burns, who they traded to New York. Uh, he obviously notes that that is big for them to try and get some pass rushers in there. Uh, so I kind of thought when he tweeted that, oh, well, maybe the Bears meeting with Wanham isn't happening, or maybe it's been pushed back. But Courtney Cronin says the meeting will happen tonight or is expected to happen tonight. So maybe he's in Carolina right now. He's going to hop on a plane, uh, get to Chicago tonight. So could have some news later this evening. Uh, and typically when you get the second meeting, if he doesn't sign after the first meeting, you know, more often than not, that gives you the better chance to kind of get that final word in there. Plus, you kind of have a feeling for what that contract offer from Carolina was as well. And DJ Wanham's a solid player. I mean, he's not incredible. He's not amazing. But he's got eight sacks in two of the last three years, four sacks in between in 2022 when he was more of a rotation guy. Starter in 21, starter in 23, was pretty productive in doing so. And so that's kind of the word, solid. Like, I would equate this to kind of DeMarcus Walker last year. Different type of player. Walker can kick inside as well. In that solid realm. Good player, not a player that's ever going to be an all-pro or anything like that. But he does fill a need. I think when you look at this defensive line right now, other than Montez Sweat, you're doing a lot of projecting. We kind of know what Andrew Billings is. I, I should mention that as well. He's a solid one tech, really good run stopper. We're hoping Javon Dexter takes that next step after Justin Jones left for Arizona. Demarcus Walker, ideally his role is like as a heavy rotation guy that can play inside and out. So where does Wanham fit if they sign him? I think based on what you currently have, let's just say they sign him tonight. I think he becomes your edge too. And Demarcus Walker becomes your fifth defensive lineman. I think he rotates in at three tech along with, DeMar uh, not Demarcus Walker. Demarcus Walker rotates in at three tech along with Javon Dexter, uh, and obviously um, he's your fifth guy because he can play some edge as well. I think Wanham would be that starting edge too. Uh, I would still like someone else on the edge if I'm being completely honest, but. For a probably contract that's going to come in at less than $10 million per year, you could do a lot worse than DJ Wanham, a guy who's 6'5", 260, and is still only 26 years old. Now, a little bit of a note, he did have surgery in December. I thought for some reason it was for an ACL. It was actually for a partially torn quad, so 
partial tear, that shouldn't be as severe. I would think he'd be ready by training camp for sure. Uh, could that factor in, uh, in contract negotiations? I would guess so. Obviously, he'll have to do some sort of a medical screening before uh, signing, but uh, that is noteworthy and something to keep in mind as well. Should the Bears sign DJ Wanham? Type S for sign or P for pass. I would like the signing, you know, two years, $15 million, you know, similar to Kevin Byard, maybe somewhere in that range. Uh, get him in here, good pass rusher. Again, not great, not going to, you know, pop champagne if they sign him, but uh, you need more defensive linemen, period, uh, and Wanham would certainly help your pass rush. Now, there are some other edges out there in free agency. I'll verbally mention Jadeveon Clowney, too. Just realized I didn't have him on there. He's visiting with Carolina, like I mentioned. So you got Clowney, Chase Young, Clayus Campbell, older, still productive, though. Michael Dana is a sneaky one. Ryan Poles was in that Chiefs front office when they drafted him, I think, in the fifth round. He's been pretty productive the last couple of years for Kansas City. Carl Lawson's still out there. Kyle Van Noy as well, who had a good year with Baltimore a year ago. So there are guys out there. Obviously, the, the Daniil Hunters of the world are no longer on the market, but uh, certainly an opportunity to still add to this pass rush. All right, let's shift from that to Justin Fields, get to the latest on the Bears' current QB1. And starting quarterback jobs are dwindling across the NFL. Where does that leave Fields at this point in time? And look, let me just be clear before the rest of this conversation continues. Justin Fields, in my opinion, should absolutely be a starter in this league. Um, there are not 32 quarterbacks that are better than him. I will take that to the grave. I just refuse to believe that. However, we see this all the time in the NFL. On some teams, guys who shouldn't be starters are starters. We saw Kenny Pickett start for two years. He is not a top 32 quarterback in the NFL, but they wanted to evaluate him because they took him in the first round. You look at how the QB carousel has played out. Kirk Cousins to Atlanta. That took them off the board. Baker Mayfield re-upped in Tampa. That took them off the board. Russell Wilson to Pittsburgh. That took them off the board. Gardner Minshew to Vegas. Could they still be in the mix for fields? Possibly. Jacoby Brissett, New England, could they still be in? Possibly. Uh, Sam Darnold to Minnesota. They could obviously use another quarterback in that room, but inner division, a lot of buzz about, around the, about them trading up for a QB. I don't think they happen at this point. Giants are an interesting one still, but they have Daniel Jones and Drew Locke on that roster now. Do they bring fields in? I don't know how that would work. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, Cleveland would have just been a backup situation anyway, but Jameis Winston went there. Mason Rudolph to Tennessee, I think that takes them out of the mix uh, if they wanted to bring Will Levis a real competition. Uh, and then uh, Joe Flacco uh, to Indianapolis, I thought maybe they could be an interesting team. Shane Steichen likes big mobile quarterbacks, but they're obviously going to commit to Anthony Richardson, who is that as well. Denver's an interesting one. They have not added a quarterback at this point in time. Jarrett Stidham is really the only quarterback on that roster. I think it would be a clear upgrade if you got Justin Fields there, but does Sean Payton want him? Sean Payton likes guys who get the ball out quickly and can get the quick passing game going. That's not really a strength of Justin Fields. So, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's one of those weird ones. Plus, Denver is also heavily rumored to be interested in moving up for J.J. McCarthy or drafting Bo Nix or someone like that. So, you're, we're kind of at a standstill right now. We don't really know what's going to happen. Is he going to be a starter next year? Is he going to be a backup? Could the Bears keep him? We'll explore that angle here in a little bit as well. Could a trade happen closer to the draft? Lots of things that could still happen. But for now, he is still on the Bears roster. Predict it for us. Where will Justin Fields play in 2024? I know a lot of you guys still think it's going to be the Bears, still think it's a smoke screen and that the Bears are trading down from number one. I don't think they're trading down from number one, but... Until it happens or doesn't, I, you know, I can't say for sure. Uh, just remember that neither uh, can you uh, on the other side of that spectrum. Now let's explore the scenario where Justin Fields could stay. Could he end up staying here? I think there's a, there's a greater than 0% chance. It would surprise me. I still think, and let me be clear, even if he's still here, I still expect the Bears to draft the quarterback. I don't think the Bears would go from, well, Maybe we don't get the offers we want for Justin, so we'll just trade the number one pick. I, I just don't see it being that way. Now, maybe there has been this deep, you know, smoke screen, and this was the plan all along. I just, that would be stunning for not only me, but literally everyone across the NFL. Uh, but um, they could keep them. If the only trades are on the table or Mac Jones offers, you probably should keep them, at least for now. I mean, I'd rather keep him, even if it creates an awkward situation, if you draft a quarterback, than 
just take a sixth round pick for Justin Fields. He's better than that. They're not just going to give him away. I also think a trade could happen near the draft or even on draft night. Say Denver or Vegas or one of these teams that tries to trade up for a quarterback, maybe they pivot and trade a middle round pick for Justin Fields on day two of the NFL draft. So there's still things that could happen. Um, but again, I, they're not just going to give him away. They're still doing uh, their due diligence on uh, Caleb Williams and obviously the draft guys as well. Uh, the Bears clearly don't seem to be in a rush on this situation, and it uh, obviously doesn't seem like there's been great interest around the league, at least for what the Bears feel like is proper return. So for now, he stays put in Chicago. All right, some news to wrap up on. This came in late yesterday, became official today. The Bears signed Amen Ogbon Baniga. I listen to that a lot. I practice. I think I'm in the ballpark. We will work on it. Um, Eamon O is what we'll call him for now. Welcome to Chicago. If you're watching, I apologize if I butchered that. One year, 2.1 million deal. He's a linebacker. This is a Dylan Cole replacement. Special teams ace. That's what he was in, in the Chargers. That's what Dylan Cole's role was here. Cole missed some time with injuries, so I think they're just hoping that Eamon O can be more healthy and more reliable in that regard. LB4, LB5, a special teamer. Nothing more, nothing less, uh, and you keep it moving. All right. That's going to do it for this episode of Chicago Bears Now. Again, we'll be live this afternoon. I think at 2 o'clock Central, something like that, 2 or 3. So have the noties turned on. Uh, keep it locked in so you know exactly when we go live. My name is Harrison Graham. We will see you guys very soon.